So with this first problem, we basically just need to know the difference between discrete and continuous data. Well, discrete means that as you go from one object to the next, there's not the possibility of having one in between. So for example, you could have two children or three children in your family, but it doesn't make sense to say I've got 2.7118 children. But with something like temperature, there is, so as you take two temperatures, let's say 65 degrees and 66 degrees, well, take any two temperatures and there's always going to be one in between. For example, 65.1, 65.2, etc. So this is continuous. Temperature would be continuous. On to the next one, which is creating a box plot. So I would suggest using the graphing calculator, TID3, for this. So if we go to stat, and then the first one, edit, is to enter the information. And for this review, I've already entered all of the data so that you don't have to watch me type it in. So here's the information in list one. 85, 77, etc. There's two ways to do the stat plot, uh, the uh, box plot, excuse me. So first of all, go to stat, move over to calculate, and the one variable statistics will find out a lot of stuff. If you're using list one, which I am, you don't need to tell the calculator. But if you're using some other list, let's say list five, you would go second and the number five. So whenever you're using list one, you don't have to tell the calculator that. So there is the mean, S, the standard deviation. The sample size is 16. But if you scroll down, here are the numbers that we need for the box plot. So we've got the graph is going to start at the minimum, which is 59. Go up to the maximum, which is 97. The first quartile, which means 25% of the way through the data, is at 70. The median is 78. And we've got the third quartile, 86.5. And then make a box around these middle three numbers. And there's the box plot. So you can also have the calculator create the graph for you. So you go right here to stat plot. You need to go second, stat plot, and choose plot number one. Make sure that it's on, so hit enter. And then move down to the type of graph and over to box plot and turn that on. And then again, if the list is anything other than list one, you need to change this. Now to go to the graph, go to zoom. And now number nine, zoom stat. That will show you the box plot. And we can even verify, so you can see the picture looks pretty similar to mine. And we can even verify the numbers. So if you go to trace, it will show you the median go to the left and it'll show you these numbers over here and so there's the box plot for the next question it takes a high school divides the people into four classes so with the methods of sampling so far that narrows it down to just two possibilities it's either cluster or stratified those are the two that divide the data into categories first. But with cluster, that would say, okay, let's randomly check off the freshmen and go interview all of the freshmen. But that's not what this is. This is interview 21 or select 21 out of the 501 freshmen. So they're just selecting part of them, not the whole cluster. So that means that it's stratified method of sampling. And for number four, we are going to be creating a frequency 
distribution with five classes. So the first thing to do is find the biggest number and the smallest number and subtract them. So that's called the range. Well, I do have the data in the calculator. And that's in list two. And I, sorry about the glare. I put them in order. And the way that I did that is, let me quit. Go back into stat. And the second thing is to sort things. And the A means ascending. So from the smallest to the biggest. So choose number two. And then just tell it it's list number two. And then it will arrange them in order. So you go back and take a look, and now list two, it's in order. So the smallest is 27, and at the bottom of the list, the biggest number is 62. So we've got 62 minus 27, so that's the width, and now divide that into five equal pieces. So width is going to be 62 minus 27 divided in five pieces is seven. If this would have been any decimal, even a 7.1, I would have rounded it up to eight so that I would be dealing with whole numbers rather than decimals. But to make sure that the width is wide enough, you'd have to round up even if it's a tiny decimal like 7.1. So it turned out to be a seven. Now to make the distribution, so on the left hand side will be the different classes and the right hand side will be the size of each class or the frequency. The next thing to do is use that lowest score of 27 as the starting point or the very bottom of this frequency distribution. And we're going to have five of them, so I need five rows. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we use the width. So add the width onto the 27, and that will be the beginning of the next class, so that's going to be 34. And then add seven again would be a 41. Add seven again would be 48. Add seven again is 55. So this class right here is gonna to need to stop at 33 because this one starts at 34. So this is going to be 27 to 33 and 34 to 40, or you could just add the width over here on this side. So add seven, add seven, add seven, but the thing is, if I add seven again, that's gonna be a 61, and then it wouldn't include that 62 year old. So when you get to the last class, you may have to make it just a little bit wider to include that oldest person. So now it's just a matter of counting. You could say, well, 29, that fits in here, so put a little tally mark. A 30, that fits in here, so put a little tally mark. Or if you've got the information in the calculator, you can just go down the list and count. So there it is in list two, and I need the 27 through 33 year olds. So 27 to 33. So that's going to be the first one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six of them there. Next, 34 to 40 year olds, so up to and including a 40. So this would be number one, the 36 year old. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine. And now the 41 through 47. So that first one is number one, two, three, four, five, six. So 
steps after okay so that 47 year old was number six and then this one is not included in this so we've got six and then up to 54 year old one two three and then the 56 year old doesn't count so three and now count the rest of them up to 62 year old so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that was number ten and there's the distribution one other thing that we should do before going on to the next one is check and make sure that these numbers here add up to the 34 so we've got 10 oops sorry mr. 62 year old I almost overwrote you okay here we go so 10 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 6 34 good okay on to the last one of page one so the keyword here is unusual and so that means is this score of 100 more than two standard deviations away from the mean or another way to do that is is the z bigger than two or is the z-score if it's negative is it less than negative two so is the score of 100 more than two standard deviations away from the mean well that means that for these scores we need to find the mean so you've got check where the data is it's in list three two three five thirteen twenty two okay so I need to find the mean and standard deviation so stat calculate the one variable statistics and then put second three for list three and there we have the mean and standard deviation so x bar is equal to a 44.9 the s the sample standard deviation is 40 4.518 and then we just need to do the Z formula so that's going to be take the score of 100 minus the mean which is 44.9 divided by standard deviation and then see if that is beyond 2 so 100 actually I should use parentheses so that the calculator knows this is in the numerator 100 minus the mean close the parentheses to say that's the numerator and then divided by 44.518 so 1.238 is not considered unusual Okay, on to the second page. So with this one, to find an average, you usually add up all of the scores here, that would be salaries, and divide by 80 people. But the problem is we don't know how much exactly the people are making. We just have a range of values. So what we can do is, find the average here so take five thousand and one dollar plus ten thousand divided by two and say well as an approximation everybody's making about seventy five hundred dollars and fifty cents so then we'd say seven thousand five hundred and 50 cents and we've got 17 people doing that and then just do that for each category here so the next one would be twelve thousand five hundred and fifty cents and there's 20 people doing that next in the middle of this would be 17 another way I'm doing it is um, this goes up by five thousand every time so I know that this is gonna go up by five thousand every time or you could just add them together and divide by two 
and next would be twenty two five hundred and fifty cents and that's for fourteen people and then twenty seven five hundred and fifty cents for seventeen people and then just add them up and then divide by 80 people. So this is basically the total amount of money that the company is paying out. And if you divide by 80, then we'll have the average. So trying to find a spot without the glare. So 75, 0, 0, 0.50 times 17 plus 12,500.5 times 20 and 17,500.5 times 12 people and 22,550 cents times 14 people and 27,500.5 times 17 people. Wow, so that's how much money the company is putting out. So. In dollars one three seven zero zero four zero point zero. That's a lot of money. And then divided by eighty people. So then divide by eighty. So the average is seventeen thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars and fifty cents. With number seven, there's that keyword of unusual again. So that means find the z-score. So take a temperature of 99.5 minus the mean of 98.2 divided by the standard deviation of 0.62 and then see if that goes beyond a two. So the score was a 99.5, a little bit better there, 99.5 minus 98.2 and then divided by the standard deviation of 0.62. And that is unusual, 2.097, 2.097. Unusual. So there's this person does have a temperature. When this is positive, that means that it's unusually high. So this person does have a temperature. Doesn't mean you have to rush into the hospital or anything, but just give them some aspirin, they'll be all right. Hey, next up, find the 46th percentile, which means as you go through this list, they happen to be listed in order if you go across. As you go through this list, which number is about 46% of the way through the 32 students? So you can find what's called L, the locator, and say I need to be 46% of the way through the 32 students. Which student is that? So 46% of 32 people, that is the person that is the 14.72nd person. 14.72. Well, there's only a 14th person or a 15th person. There is not a 14.72 person. So basically, if whatever decimal this is, it means that you've got to round up because even if this was 14.02, that still means go past the 14th person. If you have to go past the 14th person, then it's the 15th person. And so you could just count one, two, three, four, five, etc., until you find the 15th one. Or since I have all the data in the calculator, I'm going to use that. So go over to list four, and there's the scores. And right here is where it counts. So just go down until you get to the 15th person. There it is. Their score was a 68. So P46, or the 46th percentile, is the 68.